Hey everyone, Richard here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the San Martin Bank Heist, one of the newest DLCs for Payday 2. This, along with the Federales Weapon Pack, Taylor Pack Number 2, and Weapon Color Pack all released on February 27th, 2020. The heist by itself runs for $6.99 USD, however, it is also a part of the San Martin bundle. The bundle ultimately saves you a couple of bucks and gives you all the newly released DLC. The San Martin Bank Heist takes place in Mexico and is a follow-up to the Border Crossing Heist. Vlad has caught wind of the Payday Gang's operations in Mexico and wants you to help him recover some family heirlooms he believes are stored in the San Martin Bank. The mission takes place over a single day and can either be approached with stealth or with more overt tactics. Like other bank heists, the ultimate objective is to steal valuables from a well-protected vault. The stealth approach is fairly straightforward but has some interesting concepts added too. First, you will need to gain access to the bank, steal keys from the manager's office, then proceed further towards the vault. From that point, you'll need to bypass an RFID pad by cutting wires corresponding to the lights on said keypad using a blueprint to find the right boxes. Once you are in the vault area, you will have to find a keypad code to open it. The code will be found in one of the bank employee's computers with the employee's name written on a sticky note near the vault. Finally, you'll have to disable the lasers inside the vault by cutting the power in a small room on the roof. There are multiple points of ingress into the bank, but entering through the mechanic shop or scaffolding on either side of the building has been the easiest in my case. If you wish to go for plan B or your stealth plans go south, the flow of the mission will feel very similar to most bank heists. The first few steps will be the same as stealth. However, to get past the RFID scanner, you'll need the IT guy to let you in by taking him to the server room. Once you're at the vault, you'll have the beast airdropped in front of the bank. Once the drill is up and running, it's simply a matter of waiting for the vault to be breached and securing the loot to the van parked in front. The beast will break at least once, and it can be damaged by police as well, so make sure you keep a close eye on it. When you enter the vault during a plan B heist, it will fill with tear gas, limiting the actions you can take in the area. In addition to the Fabergé egg and various Romanov heirlooms found in the vault, there is also safety deposit boxes that can be sawed or picked for additional cash. Playing the heist either loud or stealth presents a unique set of challenges. However, there is one thing that I think is worth mentioning about going loud, and that is the sheer amount of SWAT van turrets even on Mayhem and Overkill. By my count, there are four SWAT van turrets that deploy during the heist, two near the escapes, one near the main entrance, and one in the side alleyway. This, in addition to the snipers that post up on the rooftops, makes securing loot and grabbing drill parts an absolute nightmare. If you do plan on going loud, either be ready to tank their damage or bring weapons to efficiently eliminate them. Otherwise, your team may have trouble securing all the loot, even with the loot zipline asset. Most firefights during the heist will happen indoors, but some medium range engagements can happen once you step outside. That being said, most weapons should be effective on this map. Throwables, grenade launchers, and rocket launchers all have a special place on this mission as the Federales tend to bunch up in certain areas of the map. The heist is an overall enjoyable experience and the change of color in scenery is a very welcome one. The bright and colorful backdrop of a Mexican city is a nice relief from the rainy, depressed look of Washington DC. The reskin of the police as the Federales, as well as their Spanish voice lines, is a nice change and helps immerse you a bit more into the setting. Unfortunately, their AI is just as dumb as their American counterparts, so don't expect any change in tactics. I will say the heist is pretty poorly optimized compared to other missions, especially the core missions of the game. On my machine, on max settings at 1080p, I typically get around 90 FPS with noticeable dips during more intense parts of the heist. Considering my system specs, that is pretty crap performance for a game that is from 2013. Hopefully, Overkill is working on the issue, as not everyone has a high-end machine for playing Payday 2. If I had to give this heist a rating, I would say 7 out of 10 once it is optimized and 6 out of 10 without, meaning it is a slightly above average mission. While it does attempt to break away from the typical Payday 2 mold, the reused assets and models and familiar objectives are what really hold it back from being a game-changing heist. If you are interested in the heist, I would definitely suggest playing with a friend or someone who already owns it to get a feel for it. If you end up enjoying it and it doesn't make your computer burst into flames, get it with the bundle as it's only $3 extra and you get 3 other DLCs alongside it. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching, let me know what you think of the new heist in the comments below. Also tell me what your tips are for dealing with SWAT turrets and stealthing as I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that could use the advice. 
If you like my content and wish to support me, feel free to subscribe or consider becoming a member of my channel. Join us next time when we take a look at the Federales Weapon Pack, but until then, happy hunting heisters.